I'm going to Spider Mountain in a few weeks, and Spider Mountain is a huge downhill park where I want to be riding at my absolute best riding ability. And to really make sure that I'm riding at my absolute best, I would like to have a little professional advice. Now, you know, most athletes have like a coach or something, and I don't really know anyone that does that for mountain biking, but I think I can talk to a physical therapist and maybe find out what are the best practices for keeping my body in a good condition to ride. I've called the local physical therapist. I asked if I could have an interview with him and I just got the lady at his front desk and she said that she would transfer my number to him. I don't know exactly if he's going to get that. I mean, he seems pretty busy. So I'm just going to show up to his office and ask if he's willing to uh, answer a couple questions. So I have now found a physical therapist to ask some questions about mountain biking. Would you like to introduce yourself to YouTube? Hello, my name is Ryan Jones and I'm a physical therapist. All right, so let's get started. My first question for you is what are the most common common injuries you've seen from bike riding and how would you go about preventing those? Well, some of the most common uh, biking exercises that uh, we've seen in the area are associated with tricep injuries as far as tricep tendonitis, lateral epicondylitis, otherwise known as tennis elbow, as well as neck injuries from riders experiencing fatigue uh, post uh, biking. Others include patellofemoral pain syndrome from constant compression at the joint. What specific exercises or stretches would you want to recommend to strengthen muscles and improve some flexibility? Well, in order to improve patellofemoral syndrome, uh, the most common way to go about that would be quadriceps stretching. You can lay on your stomach and uh, pull your knee in towards your buttock area. You can perform a couch stretch, which is a half kneeling position and pulling your knee towards your buttock area as well. The best time to do that would be pre before biking. Others would be for is to stretch with wrist flexion with your elbow extended as well. How would you recommend that I bulletproof against shoulder and ankle injuries because this is where you take a lot of impacts when you're riding jumps especially. Impact you want to perform some closed chain exercises so you could do a plantar grade position against the wall with tap shoulder taps or in a position on the ground where you're doing shoulder taps as well. You can also reach um, in directions and tap or pull throughs as well. What are some measures that I could start with preparing now to kind of be able to maintain two days of really high intensity riding at a bike park. Not only a, a preparation of physical, but uh, you also want to make sure that you have appropriate uh, carb loading, hydration. The main thing is to is to be prepared ahead of time as far as the tolls, muscular endurance, as well as the aerobic endurance. Uh, anything cardio that uh, can prepare your body for that stress is important. How important is warming up and cooling down before I ride, and what routines would you suggest? Warming up and cooling down would be essential. Body should be prepared ahead of time for that vigorous activity. Warming up would be a brief bout, uh, light cardiovascular endurance, whether that's jogging, um, stretching, particularly cool down is also essential as far as longer, lighter intensity exercise. You can just bike lighter intensity. Are there any particular signs or symptoms that would indicate I've gotten a potential injury rather than something that I can just ride through? If you ever experience any numbness, tingling, shooting pain, that that's always indicators of actual injury. What adult role does rest and recovery play in high intensity workouts and how should I try to get enough of that? Rest and recovery is just as important as anything else that we've discussed so far. Fatigue and over volume is extremely important. Um, if your body already feels as if it needs rest, you, you should just sit and, and take a break. Listen to your body. It's a vigorous sport. Vigorous intensity requires rest. And for my last question, how should I balance training and preparing for a specific event with more overall health and exercise? That boils down to specificity. You want to make sure that the particular uh, performance is down to a T. Based on speed, power, um, endurance associated while riding, you want to make sure that you train those specific things while riding. Even force absorption while landing, as far as just general um, fitness, it's more so related to gross body um, versus specificity. Hey, well, thank you so much. You've answered all my questions and uh, maybe I'll ride a little bit better now that I've, I've gotten some more information. So that was some very useful information, but now I'm going on to something a little bit different and this is actual protection. Everyone knows you wear helmets, you wear knee pads, stuff like that. And I know I'm really concerned about chipping teeth when I'm biking. Let's stop by the dentist's office and see if I can keep these uh, million dollar smile going. I've come to the dental office to interview my dentist and to ask him how I can protect my smile when I'm riding mountain bike. Yes, I am Samuel's dentist, been his dentist since he was about two or three years old. My question is, I ride mountain bikes, how can I protect my teeth from biking? If the biggest injuries I see with the 
bikers are people that hit their handlebars. You know, their front teeth they come down and hit the handlebars. A lot of times they'll knock their teeth out or they bang their chin against the handlebar. How can I prevent those kind of injuries? What do I need to do? Our first line of protection is a vacuum formed mouth protector. We take an impression of your teeth and then we use a vacuum forming machine. Fits your teeth perfectly. What makes an impression formed bite guard that I get from you better than one I can just order off Amazon? Uh, those bite guards will work okay, except they're not very comfortable. They are a type of what we call a boiling bite. You heat it up in water and put it in your mouth. A lot of times you cannot get them contoured up around your the alveolus or the, the parts of your bone that hold your teeth in. Well, I will make sure that I wear my bite guard when I'm riding bikes. I can protect that smile and thank you so much for your time today. James, do you know what day it is today? I don't think my cat knows, so I have to tell you, today is when we are officially leaving for Texas on the way to Spider Mountain, and we're beginning the trip to the bike park. So, I need to get packed. In fact, let me show you how much packing I've done. Absolutely none, and I'm leaving tonight. I think it's more important that I wash my truck. I'm gonna do that now. I need to wash off all the birthday painting. So sad. Just look at how beautiful my birthday truck is, and all of this has to come off. I guess we'll start by peeling off the happy birthday. Oh. I always think the most fun part of the car wash is when you have a big foamy bucket of soap and you get to take it and just get that first little splash right on. All right, and just like that, the truck is all cleaned up and ready for a road trip. Just gotta dry off the last bits of water. I have to actually start packing, which might not sound like that big of a deal, but here's the thing. I'm camping, so whatever I don't bring, I have to do without. I think I got all my chargers. I just threw whatever random stuff in a bag along with the GoPro. Packing is always a little frustrating to me because I wanna conserve my space as best I can, but still not have to just leave anything out. I'm gonna try to all my biking clothes into this bucket. I can throw it in the bed of the truck and forget about it. I gotta bring bike clothes and my tent all in my truck for four days. Let's see if I make this happen. Don't forget the helmet. And of course, ring goggles. And just throw them in. <laughs> I'm quite proud of this. This should take care of a lot of space and make everything else way easier. Okay, this might be the best packing I've ever done. Got a box of some biking gear, and then all my clothes have been thrown in the duffel bag. Of course, I'm 19 now, can't forget the old man pills. And then here I am saying I've packed, I forgot the most important thing. We're riding downhill, gotta get the full facer. Throw that in, now we're set. I'm a little concerned, this duffel bag looks severely undeflated, but that's all my clothes. I don't know what I did wrong. You can't forget spare tubes, because I'm likely to crack one. And this is gonna be my mattress, and it goes. Now I just gotta throw my tent supplies in the bed, and I should be set. Well, minus the mountain bike, of course. There's the tent cover and all the tent pegs. I'm worried that I'm gonna get to Texas and then realize I've forgotten something major. But I mean, come on, as long as I have cameras, clothes, and a bike, I should be set. None of the other stuff really matters. It's a mountain biking trip. It's a solid eight hours from here to Spider Mountain, so I'm not doing that in one day. Instead, tonight, I'm going to spend the night in an Airbnb in Texas, on the lake, nice little lake house, and then after that, we're finishing the trip to Texas where I will be camping in my tent. So tonight, it's just a couple hour drive, which I'm actually quite excited for, and then tomorrow, I'll make it to Texas and be ready to go mountain biking. So I'll see y'all this afternoon in the truck, and we will officially begin this expedition. I almost walked out of here without my sleeping bag. That would be horrible. This is actually the most excited I've ever been to just go to a bike park. Been training, been preparing, got all the gear. Now, I know I'm very biased for saying this. I think trucks just look a little bit better with a bike in the back. Brings it to the next level. The whole back is filled up. There's two bikes back there. I'm about to begin this road trip two and a half hours tonight, and then we'll spend the night in Airbnb. And the first part of our trip is done. We've now made it to uh, Toledo Bend, right across the border in Texas, just in time to catch the sunset. Look at that, just some nice little wispy clouds. And we'll be headed off tomorrow morning to go to Spider Mountain and get on the mountain bikes. I decided I would be smart and bring my laptop so I could edit this video while I'm on the trip and kind of edit day by day. Turns out I'm not smart. I forgot my SD card reader. So in case you're wondering, I've edited all of this after the trip. Nice little paperweight I have with me now. Good morning guys, spent the night in the lake house. As you can see, we're on lake time. I even had a nice little view out of my window this morning. Got some little flowers in the sun over there. But it's not so great because I've woken up feeling a little sick, have a pretty bad sore throat. Sauce just doesn't get any worse. We're still gonna ride, still gonna be a fun time, so. We just stopped at the gas station and refilled. We are 30 minutes away from Spider Mountain. I'm feeling a little worn out, but I think I'm gonna be okay to ride. I was really concerned because my whole plan for this trip was to be riding my absolute best, and I'm really not feeling super strong right now. I guess I'm just a little run down from starting to get sick, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to get some solid riding done today, and I just cannot wait. So in 30 minutes, I'll be at Spider Mountain and shredding. I've now made it to Spider Mountain. I've got an hour before the lift closes, so this is gonna be my first ride. Let's see if I can get warmed up today. 
So as part of my warm up, I have to make sure to get my stretches in. Gotta make sure we're feeling good on the bike for the first ride. I think my first trail of the day is gonna be Viper's Den. If I remember correctly, this has a big wall ride that Spider Mountain is known for. I'm gonna drop in, see how this goes. I'm stoked. Let's get riding. This is also my first time ever riding an enduro bike at this bike park. We're gonna take this first lap pretty easy since it is my first ride of the day and I am feeling a little sick. Oh wait, this is not the trail I was expecting it to be. I've got no clue where I'm headed now. Red Bull TV, let's go. I kind of made my own shortcut there. We're dropping in on lap two. This time, we're gonna attempt to make it to the wall ride. It's been a long time since I've ridden it. I don't even know if I rode it the last time I was here, but it'll be a good warm up, I think. All right, here we go, Tarantula Trail. Here's what I'm after. Wow, I went high on that. There's some boys in front of me. I'm gonna let them have some time to get ahead. Dropping in on Venom. So I messed up a little bit on the last trail that I rode with some big jumps. Uh, there was some people in front of me and I tried to let them have enough time so I wouldn't run into them. And then on the way down the trail, I caught up with them and they were slow. So I didn't get to clear all the jumps, but I'm going back for another attempt to maybe even throw in a trick. They have plenty of hang time. I've just never done it before, so. Big send on that last gap, that was huge. Now we're back in on Venom. So the goal this time is to clear all these jumps. If I trick one, that'll be a cherry on top. This is steep. Let's try. That was fun. Yo! Yeah! That was mega, yes! I'm absolutely mind blown. I cannot believe I tricked all three of those jumps in a row. They weren't the best toboggans in the world, but I've never done a trick on those jumps in my life. So I am proud of that. The lift closes in 13 minutes, so I'm about to close this park out. I'm making the last lift up with my YT. We're gonna make one ride down. Let's see if we can find the camp spot for tonight. Feeling a little worn out, a little run down from the cold. So far, riding pretty good. For our last lap, I might go high speed. Huge on that. Steezing. We survived the last lap. I closed off the bike park. I rode to the lift closed. We've turned up at Reveille now where uh, one of the most fun well tails to ride is. I'm about to get on my bike and ride this well tail. There are some big drops that I definitely need to check out. Oh. Went a little deep on that one. My favorite thing about riding at Reveille Peak Ranch is the drops they have. They have some of the most fun drops and I've ridden here before. And you see the drops up behind me. They have four flat drops of different sizes and then one big kind of shoot. But I've never ridden the biggest drop of these and I'm feeling really good today and I might just do it. So uh, yeah, first drop of the day. I'm gonna ride the big one. Woo! <laughs> yes, dropping. Yes! Mountain biking here at Reveille today has been absolutely amazing. It was just my first session getting out of the truck after driving this morning, and I've already ticked off some stuff I've never ridden before, tricked a big drop, but I'm starting to feel pretty worn down with my cold, and it's a little hot, so I think it's time to call it a day. So we're gonna take a rest here, and I am absolutely hyped for tomorrow. I've done some incredible riding today, and I'm so proud of that. Tomorrow, we should be back for some even better riding on one of the best biking trips ever. Stoked, prepared, and already had a blast just in day one. 
I had so much footage from this trip that I'm gonna have to turn this into a two video episode but this is gonna end off day one and I have to admit having gotten some professional advice on improving myself for riding bikes and then spending three weeks just doing those simple things recommended by the physical therapist I saw an instant difference in my riding and I'm pretty sure you guys can tell that is some of my best riding footage I've ever done I checked off some bigger features than I've ever ridden before in my life but come back for part two where I camp in some conditions wilder than anything I've ever done before and I do even better riding than I did on day one all while I was dealing with the cold and a couple hundred miles away from home so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please leave a like subscribe to my channel get out on your mountain bike share this video with your grandmother take her on some adventures and I'll see you guys in the next one goodbye